This podcast is brought to you by Sound Pollination, an audio production company helping creative minds make some noise. What is that? What is it? Oh, no, not the beat! Not the beat! What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Bad Movies Podcast. I'm your host, Gianni DeMaia. Alongside me today is the Italian stallion herself. It's Kelly Mayfield. (laughs) (laughs) Today, as you might have guessed. You can just call me stallion. Just stallion. Okay, just for the rest of the episode, we'll call you just stallion. (laughs) So today, you might have guessed, but we're talking about Rocky IV. That is Rocky IV, the fourth entry in the Rocky franchise, written and directed by Sylvester Stallone. I wrote that down too. Good job. <laughs> that was I was like, oh, I forgot about that part. You know what? You're my first guest with handwritten. <laughs> That's actually that is a first. Um, so, just to get it out there, right? So, just so we know, um, Rocky one through six, all written by Stallone. Only one and five were not directed by him. And that's just that's just talking about Rocky, not the Creed movies. Mm-hmm. Um, cause Creed one, he's only credited for the characters. Obviously he created the characters and, uh, in, Ro- in Creed two, he's, he's given a screenwriting credit. Um, but among three other people, I think, mm-hmm. uh, but the Rocky films largely his, um, which, which I guess makes sense. It's his baby from the very beginning. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, I know I brought you on cause you're a huge Rocky nerd like me. I had the, from Rocky One, this whole life was a million to one shot poster <laughs> in my room for years and years and years. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, like, I, I wrote in that, I like, into the notes for this episode, I was like, we'll just briefly talk about <laughs> this series. But I was like, <laughs> I, I didn't know what that was really going to consist of, I guess. I guess I just wanted to, like, say, because I know that this series means as much to you as it means to me. Mm-hmm. This is just kind of, like, one of my favorites right up there with, like, Lord of the Rings. Um, in some ways, I almost like it better than Lord of the Rings. Like, only in some way, like, like... It's a, it gives you a different feeling. Totally different. Totally different world. But, yeah. like, the thing mm-hmm. is, is, with Lord of the Rings, it's like, I don't give a shit about the Hobbit movies, but I give a shit about every Rocky movie, even the bad ones. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. But, like, Return of the King, I would, I would say, is, like, one of my favorites of all time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's tough to, yeah. tough to top. But, like, yeah. but, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just one of those things. Well, I, the, for the Lord of the Rings, I love each of those characters because I reread those books 150 times. Right, right. Up. So each of those characters is so familiar to me, and I thought that they, that Peter Jackson did, not that we're going to get off on a Lord of the Rings tangent. No, no, we can get off of that. Such an amazing job bringing that to the screen. And as we've discussed, right. it contained what I think is the singular most important, um, the single most important scene. He, he, he captured it he grabbed it yep in, oh yeah in the, in the return of the king yeah i am no man i was ready i after that i was like yep perfect. yep yep uh but so what is it about rocky that you think connects to you uh, rocky i i love so I, <laughs> yeah sylvester stallone was robbed for uh not winning the oscar for his creed for his performance in creed oh absolutely i just i just think there is something so warm and genuine about i mean and as you say you know the the movies are largely him but he is rocky and rocky is him yep. i just I, I, there's no matter what else he's done i can't separate the two and i just really really I just, that character just slays me yeah oh yeah and in every movie too it's it, it, there is something to be said about how consistently affecting that character is absolutely and it has a lot to do with i guess him writing it as well yeah but yeah. um but yeah man i i there's, I don't know, there's just something about these movies that I really, I, I honestly can't place it. They're, some of, they're all ranging, like some of them are great, some of them are not so great, but I love them all and I don't know why. Well, and I just think there's a, he has a quality, not unlike Spongebob of, and I'm going to say childlike, but I don't mean simple. I mean, just, just, he just, lo- he loves Adrian, mm-hmm. he loves, you know, he loves Apollo eventually, he lo- I mean, he yeah. just, he just is who he is. He wears it on his sleeve. Absolutely. So that's what I love about him. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I totally feel you. We'll talk more about the Rocky films as it goes. But in case anyone was curious, okay, if you're an audience member and you're curious, you're like, Gianni, you just did Love Actually. Why now? Why now do Rocky Four? Well, it's because Rocky Four is a Christmas movie. It might surprise you. Rocky Four, the final fight, takes place... On Christmas Day. That's true. I guess. Why? I guess we don't know. <laughs> but because it's on uh, Day. I, I, I think um, 
Drago was not allowed to fight back in the United States because because correct because uh, Apollo. Because spoiler, I, he, yeah, you know, yeah. We, we we'll we'll get into like more specific spoiler territory, but but uh, but yeah, no, there there is uh, the main villain of the film is no longer allowed back in the states, or not necessarily. I don't know if it's that he's not allowed. I think it was so he couldn't box in the United States. I think that yeah. the, the whatever they don't want to risk it or whatever he's getting. And I am compelled to say yes, which I've said to you before. Please, I hate boxing. Mm-hmm. But I love Rocky Balboa. I think that is a very important distinction. To make. And and we'll get into this too. But the actual fight scenes mm-hmm. are among my favorite things about this movie. And awesome. look, I I can't tell you how much I hate boxing. Oh my god, I love that. I totally so, love that. But that's like, that. I, I don't get that at all. But that was totally my fault. <laughs> I, was I wasn't knocking anything off the table. Yeah, that was not that was not <laughs> Kelly just yeah. being fucking angry and just throwing. <laughs> uh, so just a, a quick score breakdown for you. So this is this movie has a six point eight on IMDb, a forty meta score, and a two out of four stars from Roger Ebert. We'll talk, I guess, about where, because I have a whole section that I don't want to I don't want to give away yet. But just stay stay tuned is what I'll say. But we'll we'll have a whole thing where we really like talk about I guess the larger picture of the Rocky movies. But for the main bulk of this review. You know, we could have talked about a number of Rocky films. This is the one that's a Christmas movie, so that's really why I chose it. But also, I do think this is, like, one of the most divisive in the franchise. Well, it's. I think that unless you are a Rocky ophile, you are not going to get into all the way to a four. Yeah, that's, you know what I mean? Yeah, you You're not going to see two. two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You might have seen three because of Clubber Lent, you know, because of Mr. T, if, if, if you were Yeah, if you were, like, a fan of the A-team yeah. back in the yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> <That's about it. laughs> um, but, okay, so... Just talking, just Rocky Four. General impressions. What what are your what are your feelings? How do you how do you feel? How, how does this movie weigh on you? Do you like it? Um, I guess is where we'll start. I I do like it. Okay. Um, there are parts of it I really really like. Right. Um, I I it, upon rewatching it again. Okay. It was I was shocked at how disjointed it seemed. Hmm. Um, things that made no sense. And really, I, I, we're not going to get into the, the things, the things we love and hate about well, it. But yeah, just we'll save spoilers for later. Overall, but, yeah. um, it was like one big giant retrospective. It must've mm. been 60%. Or fifty percent. I mean, literally the whole the opening scene, like you know, just going yeah, back. Like we'll, we'll talk a great deal the about mu- the, and then I'll just mention the, the retrospective. The, is. They weren't even mini music videos; they were like full on music <laughs> videos. <laughs> this, this is the one, and you know what? Ebert Ebert actually talks about it a lot in his review, but he's he makes a good point where it's like this feels like the one step too far, and I d- I do agree in some sense. I will say I like this movie a lot better than I think most people do. I think a lot of people think of this as like. Oh yeah, that can't be silly one. I don't think of it as much as that. And we'll talk about really why. I actually think this this movie weighs a lot more emotionally. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do I do see that this is maybe the one where it was like, okay, there's some producerial influence. There's some stuff. Uh, this movie deals a lot with the Soviet Union and the uh, in 1985. Yeah. I mean, think about what where the country was exactly, in, yeah. and mm-hmm. um, and that sort of era definitely weighs on this film, mm-hmm. and I think not always for the best. But in this, in the grand scheme of like the character and where it takes this character, I think that it does do some very interesting things. I think that um, it should be stated also. Um, we won't talk about this in depth because I know you haven't seen it, but Creed Two um, just came out. If you have, if you're a Rocky fan, definitely go see it. You probably already have if you're a Rocky fan, but or, or unless you're Kelly Mayfield, unless you're Kelly Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but definitely go see it. Uh, if you're not a Rocky fan, uh, you know, watch Creed One if you like that. Definitely, definitely check back into Creed Two because the thing is, is what I, what I think Creed Two does so well, um, and it does some things not well, but what I think it really does so well is that it makes this movie feel particularly important and particularly impactful, which I think is upon rewatching it again, I hard for me to, to separate. I had to really be like, okay, look at this movie just on its own, which I think is tough, but Creed two on its own or Rocky, four Rocky four, own? Rocky four on its own. Um, Creed two on its own. Fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Definitely go check it out. Mm-hmm. And that's all I'll say about that. But um, I think that the biggest thing, 
for me, before we get into spoilers, I just want to say this. I can't decide if I just don't find this film to be ridiculous that often, or if I'm just super biased for this character. And I really had to, that was really the thing I worked, I guess, the hardest to I'm separate. I'm super biased for sure. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> but it, 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 things were just, they were so obvious. Right. The edit, you know, just from the editing, like the, the training sequence, you know, it, once, once he's in rush, I mean, just yeah. everything, like I said, every, everything's right up front. There's no pretensions about being subtle. Mm-hmm. Not that there really ever is, is in a Rocky movie. No. Um, although I, Rocky one was. Rocky one, I think, uh, is unique for its time. Very yeah. unique for its time. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's off the table. But I just think there was zero subtlety in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't necessarily think that's re- that's a ridiculous thing. No, you know. No, I, I mean the only ridiculous thing subtlety is, I find is overrated. There's, yeah, I, I agree. You know, <laughs> I, I actually agree mm-hmm. with that. I, I agree with that sen- sentiment. I think that the only thing that maybe is like uh, ridiculous to me is that there, there's a fucking robot in this. I do, yes, exactly. <laughs> in all capital letters, R O B O T. Why is there a robot? I don't know. There but... was a there's a there's a story to that which I found out afterwards because I couldn't. It, oh, it was okay, making no sense. Yeah. All right, but but yes. So um, I think we're gonna get into it now. Here's here's what I want to do first because this is the fourth entry. Mm-hmm. I want to do just a brief recap of the Rocky installments leading up to this. So just to go over it. We're going to get into spoilers for Rocky films one through four. If you haven't seen them, you've had plenty of time, <laughs> but, but, but go see them. Cause they're, they're great movies. They really are. Um, specifically one, of course, but, um, but two and three are, are good, good to great as well. So, um, the moments leading up to Rocky four, Kelly Mayfield, please tell us what we missed. If we're just jumping into Rocky four, you missed the the Palooka, who is Rocky Balboa, <laughs> rising and falling and rising again, basically. I just yeah. think because like a phoenix from the like, fucking just, ashes. Just like, yeah, 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 and and the I, I digress for a moment because the one thing about another thing about this movie, and I couldn't because I can't remember Rocky three that clearly. Okay. I, he lost all his money. That's why, I mean, it, it, he was very, very broke because Adrian, this was at Rocky Two where Adrian was worried about the house and the cars and all of a sudden this car's driving a freaking Lamborghini and they're living in this mansion. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, I think that was Rocky Three, actually. I think, and I think, I think that's why he kind of gets he, back into the Mr. T fight. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, that's what I thought too. So um, anyway, I guess that maybe he made a bunch of money off of that because yeah, he was doing that commercial, you know what I mean? That, yeah, that weird, a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of weird character stuff that like, yeah, happens that, in Yeah, that's movies. kind of the disjointed stuff I was yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, but so like Rocky One... He's an amateur fighter, works for the mob. He's really just an eccentric, nice, lovable guy mm-hmm. that's sort of just down on his luck. And then there's also juxtaposed with Apollo Creed, who is essentially, I guess, this era's Muhammad Ali yeah. is basically yeah. what they're trying to get across. He's the greatest boxer in the world. He's bored with his sort of circumstances. While Rocky ends up falling in love for his friend's sister, Adrian, Apollo decides to give a random amateur fighter a shot at the title, a, sh- a chance to fight Apollo Creed because he's bored with his current circumstances, right? And of course they pick Rocky, right? So Rocky fights Apollo Creed. Rocky goes the distance, but loses. A lot of people forget that about yeah, Rocky. Yeah. I don't know why people forget that Rocky loses in Rocky 1. It's yeah. very, I think, very The whole thing was going the distance. The whole, it wasn't really about winning. The point is yeah. that he tries as hard as he possibly can, and he proves that he can at least... Take, and that was uh, one of the brilliant uh, things about that movie, too, because... Yeah. In other circumstances, he might have won. You know what I mean? In, in the hands of another. And that's what and they that would explore. have been the Cinder- Yeah, the real. Yeah, exactly. And so um, Rocky Two is all about Rocky asking Adrian to marry him, and Apollo being sort of pressured into that rematch. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. In, in Rocky Two, Rocky wins. Rocky Three, Rocky's trainer Mickey dies. I honestly. I can't remember how, which I, I, I'm such a shitty Rocky fan, but well, I, I really, I could not remember. I remember Rocky's by his side, but I can't remember. Well, because there was the a hell. scene in Rocky IV, I think, from Mickey dying. Oh, and, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, It's just like a little, it's like, it's like a blink and you miss it. But well, it's, it's during that montage when he's driving right, the fucking car. Right, how many of those Oh my montages. God, we'll talk about that. Yeah. But, yes. but, um, <laughs> but so Rocky's trainer dies. Rocky goes into a spiraling, spiraling depression. Clubber Lang basically takes over as like one of the elite boxers of the era, basically an unbeatable Mr. T. Mm-hmm. And he is the most Mr. T mm-hmm. ever in that he movie. Is. He but is. But what ends up happening is that Apollo Creed ends up offering to train Rocky. And they end up becoming very good friends. 
And if you don't know the ending of Rocky Three, don't worry because Rocky Four shows you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that at at some length. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, what happens is uh, Rocky goes the distance again. He beats Clubber Lang, and then it ends with uh, this famous scene where Apollo and Rocky are just the two of them uh, in the in the the fight studio, I guess, alone, and they decide to have a a match just between the two of them and a freeze frame. And we never know what happens until Creed won. <laughs> <laughs> but then also in, in Rocky IV, uh-huh. we get to relive pretty much that entire sequence. Yep. Which is actually one of my favorites. And I had actually forgotten it was from Rocky III. Yep. Um, one of my favorite things is the Apollo Creed-Rocky relationship. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think it, in, and, and I have to say in Rocky IV, it is by far the most comes off as the most genuine. It's when Sylvester or Rocky is at his most joyful when he's, when he's talking with Apollo and they're oh, yeah. like those scenes. I mean, it just, there's, there is such chemistry between the two absolutely. men. It is, it is absolutely, it, absolutely. It's, I, I think that where Rocky three goes, goes a little like, and this is so weird to say, but it's like, it's the eighties and it was a little almost like, homoerotic at some parts in Rocky 3 like them running on the beach together and like jumping into each other's arms is all a little weird for me it's not it's not bad or uncharacteristic of those two guys I guess but it's like it just it just feels super kind of out of place in that movie well it's that. just like the, the 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 long arc of these former yeah rivals bitter adversaries becoming now, are now yeah besties. great friends yeah. but I do think that by and large Rocky 3 does a great job of building that relationship to the point where Rocky Four can be as affecting as it is mm-hmm. on its own, just knowing that there is a genuine love and admiration mm-hmm. between these two men, mm-hmm. these two mm-hmm. uh, champions, yep. I guess. Yep. But so then, tell us what happens in Rocky Four. Um, the Soviet Union has a machine, otherwise known as <laughs> Victor Drago, or I, I was calling him Dolph Drago because yeah, Dolph, Dolph Lundgren. His <laughs> <laughs> name is it's Dolph Lundgren, um, <laughs> and the entire movie. His dialogue is never more than four words. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will break not, you. Yeah, well, that's that's what he says to Rocky. <laughs> right, yeah. What he says to Apollo is, um, "You will lose, or you must lose, or something like that." Then, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's just—I mean, literally three or four words at a time. You <laughs> and his wife, uh, Brigitte Nielsen, yep. uh, does all his talking for him at all the press conferences and stuff. So he literally he never says a word. But anyway, he's this 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 model of physicality yes. that the Soviet Union has developed um, to to fight. And he, and I just saw it, I can't, I can't believe I'm forgetting this already. He, they talked about fighting Rocky Balboa, and then Apollo was in the pool with his three dogs. He has three dogs. That's kind of surprised me too. I don't know why. Kind of awesome. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> kind of life. Swimming around with his pool, <laughs> I mean, with his dogs. Yeah. Um, then he sees him on TV, and then he does, and he decides he wants to fight. So they fight. Um, spoiler alert. Drago kills Apollo yep. in the ring. Yep. Um, and Rocky kind of <clears throat> goes off. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's that, that, was I expecting that when I first saw the movie? I can't remember. It was so long ago. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of the movie is Rocky avenging Apollo's death. Yeah. And deciding that he has to, that he really has to. And, it's so much, so much uh, foreshadowing. Remember that the speech about when Rocky was like, uh, Apollo, why do you want to do this? He's like, I'm a fighter. I will never change. You and I will never change. Yes. It's the same speech that Rocky gives Adrian when Adrian, who was surprised by his Russia trip, you mm-hmm. know, he comes home and it's like, hey, I'm going to Russia. Um, or <laughs> actually, she, 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 she had heard it on the news. <laughs> yeah. He gives a version of that speech back to her about why he has to do this for yeah. Apollo. Yeah. Which, um, you know. Yeah. And then he beats him. And then he beats him. And then he has this lengthy speech that we'll talk about. Yes. <laughs> uh, but. And in between there, there's a lot of music videos and some uh, <sighs> rather bad 80s music. There, there sure is. There's no easy way out. And hearts on fire. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Uh, I'm a horrible singer in case you are just listening to this. So positives first. I'm going to talk about the positives first. My number one positive of this movie, the downfall of Apollo Creed. I think the characterization of Apollo Creed is my favorite part of this movie by miles. I think, of course it's intensified by the previous installments, but I think just on its own, this movie does such a good job of characterizing him as the champion past his prime Mm -hmm. that is not necessarily losing because uh, Drago is so much better than him, 
but losing because of his own sort of um, arrogance. Totally. And, and you, the whole, the whole, that whole fight scene, I, you know, like I said, I don't know much about boxing, but I don't think you want to waste all your energy dancing around with James Brown before you get in the ring with this that is machine. True. <laughs> this is true. So, and I and I know that that's one of the most ridiculous parts of the movie, mm-hmm. but it does such a good job of telling us exactly where Apollo is yes. at in his life, yeah. where it is, yeah. where it has become all of these eccentric theatrics, where it has just become it's more of the show that he puts on and than it's the match a, itself. Interesting play on the this this chump doesn't think it's a damn show; he thinks it's a damn fight. Yes. from Rocky One. Yes, so, <laughs> exactly. Because now I, it is a, to, to Apollo. It is a show. It, 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 it always was it a show. Grows the, yeah. It grows that character so much, and it's. It's the perfect way for him to go, I think, for a lot of reasons. But one, but I, one of which just being the the growth of that character to be so tragic that now it's it's gone it's gone all the distance it can go with with him as the adversary and becoming the friend. And it makes sense that he dies in the ring, mm-hmm. and it's horrifying and really really dark for this franchise to go there. And I mean, it has a lot of implications, I guess, on like uh, American theatrics and 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 um, and if you know, I, I guess it has like a lot of more political leanings, is what I mean. But I but I think just by and large, just focusing on that Apollo character is really where I I I find myself sympathizing with with him so much, and I think that Creed too obviously makes it that much more impactful but can we stop talking about creed 2 i'm so sorry i'm so sorry but i (laughs) I just had to bring it up but but i think they do just just do such a good job of making the arrogance the result of his death Mm -hmm. not necessarily that drogo is that much more powerful because he of course he is (laughs) and there's a lot of things about drogo that you just sort of have to accept as circumstances what did they say the average punch was what like like 700 and his is like 1950 or something it's like Four times the yeah. natural, yeah. whatever. Um, I think actually Ebert in his review is like, it's kind of hard to believe that if his punch is that much stronger that he can't just decapitate Rocky. Once, <laughs> just like one punch and we're done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I, I mean, exactly. Like, it's a fair criticism, yeah. I guess, but there, there are, you to judge a movie fairly, I think you just have to buy into the circumstances that it's giving you. And it's giving me the circumstances that he can punch that hard, A, eh, and then that Rocky can take that punch and that Apollo can't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's just what it is. And I think accepting that, I he find that really iron. touching. He is made of iron. That's what Dolph says about Rocky halfway through their fight. Right, that? that's right. He's I made do of remember. Iron. So bro, we know our boy Rocky can take a punch. Fuck yeah, that. he is. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, not to mention he's fueled by the fucking revenge. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. And blood. Exactly. Um, my next positive is uh, just Sylvester Stallone's ability to up the ante. Now... So this one's kind of tricky because um, Drogo is, gosh, there are things about the character in this movie that bother me because he gives you nothing. There, there's no reason to feel any sort of sympathy for him or anything. He's not the most compelling villain, but he is a terrifying villain, and I think that. Stallone wisely makes the choice, or I, and I don't know if it was just Stallone because I, I think that I read that Lung, uh, Dolph Lundgren had a lot to do with this. That they wisely make the choice to make this character, this this adversary, very different from Apollo and Clubber Lang, where he is just this stoic giant. He's a machine, and he doesn't he doesn't say a whole lot. He doesn't move all that often. And he just packs a fucking punch. A lot of close shots on his eyes looking. Yeah. What, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fucking like devious <laughs> eyes. I, I think I read somewhere that he, he auditioned with like 8,000 other people to play this role, which is fucking awesome. Really? I can't <laughs> imagine who. Uh, yeah. This, I mean, like, and I, and I think that, um, I get, I guess what I'm just trying to say is that four installments in the franchise still finds a way to make the opponent seem Greater than Rocky. He's now he's, he's gone the distance so many times, and somehow I still don't think he can do it again. He's the eternal underdog. That's exactly. another thing that I love about, about oh, yeah. that character. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, you know, Creed goes a totally different route with this. It takes, you know, it takes Michael B. Jordan in very different ways um, as the as the quote unquote underdog. Um, to the point where Creed two, he's literally not the underdog. But I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm just saying. Um, but accepting that Drogo can punch 
you know, whatever it is, 10 times his normal, the normal man, accepting all of that, you don't sympathize with him. You're terrified of him. And I think it's such a smart choice that this franchise decides to go bigger <laughs> um, at this juncture because, I, you know, it's hard to do that uh, 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 and pull it off and maybe the second movie or whatever. You know, you see so many franchises that go bigger and, and are worse. But they go bigger on the fourth movie and it's like, okay, it feels like you've earned it now. Like, I, I'm with you now. I get it. And, you know, I got problems with Drogo. We'll talk about those later. But those are the things I like about Drogo, I guess. And that's all I'll say about that, I guess. My last thing here, and this is like an easy one. It's an energetic movie. <laughs> it's like an easy praise to give the Rocky franchise, I guess. But um, this it, it uses effective music videos, um, displays of physical strength, and it breathes a lot of vibrancy into the audience as well as the characters. It motivates Rocky and it motivates you watching him. It motivates you to then give a shit because he is investing his every cent into it. And it's not the only thing, obviously, but I think the whole movie just does a really good job of, you know, it's an hour, 30 minutes. It's very brief. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I don't know the runtime specifically of all the other Rocky movies, but it feels like the shortest Rocky it, movie. It was, I, when I realized how short it was, I, yeah, it's gotta be. It clicks along. Um, and it really makes you feel like you want him to do it. You know what I mean? And, and I think all the Rocky movies do a really good job of, of you want him to do it, except for maybe five. This one, I, it's a staple of the series, but it, I think it's for a reason that those montages ex exist in there and that the fights are really, um, quick editing and, 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 and they really feel like impactful, not just to, uh, the physical attributes of the characters, but also to the emotional weight that it's taking on them. So that's what I got. I don't know if any of that made any sense. Well, and so my turn. Oh my god! Please <laughs> take, take as many. I've, I've as already. You want. I've I'm already. Just talking over here. I've already talked about um, <laughs> the Apollo Rocky relationship. That is by far my favorite thing. Oh, yeah. about this movie. Yeah. Um, which part of it's from Rocky Three? Yes, but just that that whole uh, development has. Um, Big just makes me so happy. Just yeah. makes me so happy. Um, it's it's a Rocky movie. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing about these Rocky movies. I mean, just like they're they're Rocky movies. Yeah, which I love, obviously. <laughs> but and surprising again, um, uh, my my third favorite thing is this this particular fight scene. The last one or the, the Rocky fight? Four? Okay, the, okay. the Rocky Four, uh, the uh, Dolph Rocky. The got it. Got it. Drago yeah. fight. Um, and maybe to your point, is edited. I just. Again, coming from somebody who can't watch live, like real boxing, mm -hmm. you know, this is, a, a, it's an amazing, a, just an amazing sequence yeah. of, of the of the trajectory. It's always like, he's down. No, he's not. You know, mm -hmm. he's back. And when, and once our boy starts throwing punches, man, just like. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, because Rocky gets right what so many sports movies that are bad get wrong. And I think even at the worst Rocky installments, Rocky Five. <laughs> Even at the worst Rocky installments, it still gets it right. Where it's not about the fight. It's not about what they're doing. It's about what it means to them. And that's and even in Rocky IV, this means something to Rocky. And it, and even it, it means something to Apollo, too. And it means something to Drago. Mm -hmm. Drago proving that, that the Soviets are better than mm -hmm. the Americans. You know, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but that was his wife's speech. Yeah. That was, yeah. Uh, what's her name? Lud Ludmilla? <clears throat> I'm not sure. I don't know why I think that. Anyway, I am not sure, but, but, um, yeah, even as campy as this film can be sometimes still means a lot to those characters and you know, that it, credit where credit is due, I guess. Moving on, moving on to the, we're out of the positives, which means that we're into the sponsorships today. <laughs> we're sponsored by leather and earth. Don't click that 15 second fast forward button because we are partnering with leather and earth, a small batch handmade boot company. Each boot is styled to be gender neutral, durable, minimal, and dependable made in Portugal, but based out of NYC, the best looking boots I've ever seen. Would I lie to them, Kelly? No. Thank you. Leathers are hand selected by the manufacturer. If you go to www.leatherearth.com, Purchase a pair of boots with the discount code POLLINATE10. You'll get 10% off your purchase, and you'll help us out tremendously in the process. 
Sorry about the crackling paper. I got I got so close. No, oh my god, <laughs> crinkle the paper all over the place because I got so close to getting that right, and then I said process. Oh well. Moving to the negatives, Kelly. We're moving um, on. I don't know if any of my positives made sense. They did. But you know what? I don't care because it's my show. <laughs> they can deal with it. No, <laughs> That's I don't right. know about, but I am here as your guest. Thank you. Thank you for being you here as my me. guest. My pleasure. We're moving on to the negatives, Kelly. Um, I think, as we mentioned before, <laughs> that robot. <laughs> the robot is, the, which the goes robot. to the disjointedness of some of these, some of, some of this, some of this stuff. Well, so then, okay, well, well, I'll just, I'll skip my first one and I'll go right to the, I'll talk to right about the robot. Okay. Here's what I got written. Time wasters. I think this movie is filled with a shitload of time wasters. Yes. It's an hour and a half long. And I think easily 30 minutes could be cut from this movie. Well, 30 minutes are music videos. Yes. Well, well, but musical- here's the thing. 30 minutes are given to an, a, a ridiculously 80s robot that doesn't do anything That's for anyone. first a man, then a woman. Well, I, you know, like I guess. A, a Polly had a reprogram so and that it's, it's and a it, woman. And it, and it, ta- it can respond to you. I don't understand. It's artificial they- intelligence before artificial intelligence. In the fucking 80s. <laughs> Uh, the, but then there's also the opening that shows the entire end of the third film, which is yes, uh, which why, is why I was confused. Yes, why yes. do I need to watch the third film if you're just going to tell me exactly what? It, mm-hmm. Like it's such a lazy cop out, and I hate when movies do that. You know what fucking franchise does that all the time? Is Friday the Thirteenth? They always do that. They always in like almost every one of those movies they show you the end of the film before, which is so weird and lazy, and I don't understand. And then. Um, the car montage. I hate the car montage. It's horrible. It's all it does is it just shows Rocky driving for I don't even know. Like and it, it goes five through minutes and all movies. All three previous movies <laughs> shows you almost every, in their entirety every significant moment for all of them. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, and yes. even moments that aren't significant. Yep. Or I mean, like kind of like, the beach sequence of Apollo. Like, well, like, there's why it's that in there. I don't well, know why it's the, in that montage. The the uh, proposal at the zoo. Which, yes. Which. You know, which I love. I do too. Love that scene, but that's, that's in Rocky too. I, I don't know. need to see it in Rocky Four. Um, but I just what I it, it, that Mickey dies. Um, there's there's so much in that car montage. It's like and it, it's I guess it's like he's just reliving his entire fighting. Yeah, I don't. Need you know what it, I mean? But I don't need it. The thing is, the only people that need it are the people that didn't watch the previous installments. But and but I don't it wouldn't know. mean anything to them if they hadn't seen the previous. Well, no, no, you don't give. It, why would you care? <laughs> why would you care? Exactly. You. Uh, the movie should stand on its own, and this movie does not. That's, I guess, my biggest problem with it. Well, and it, it, the whole storyline does, and they just don't trust that it does. It can't I guess, stand on really. its own because it needs two. Yeah, I mean, you know, what I mean, it needs it. That's that's it, it's not, it's not possible mm-hmm. to understand why Rocky is so hell bent on revenge. Yeah, without well, no, no, I take that back. Well, he, but yeah, but it's just no, but I, I yeah, but I get what you're saying. Is I guess it's it, it's you just sort of have to buy into certain circumstances. Mm-hmm. In this one, and they, I guess, were worried that you wouldn't. So then they showed you everything that you can buy everything. into. Everything, and I'm like, why do you mm-hmm. need to? And he's driving his Lamborghini or whatever that big expensive car is. Yeah, whatever. It's really just for product placement at that point, isn't yeah, well, it? Well, like the, the the when he shifts, and I mean, that's when like the, the that's what I'm saying. The editing and the cuts, and you know, it's just all it's, it's, that, that montage is so unnecessary. Yeah. But and it's, it's like so endless. But the robot, I mean, it's a weird, distracting, like '80s cliche. It does like why is it in this movie? Uh, I don't and know. We haven't even talked about Polly, but what has Polly become in this movie? He's his ringside, <laughs> a cheerer honor guy, simpering. You know, That's Rocky. The, you I know. never really, even in Rocky One, like Rocky One, I think Polly annoys you, honestly. And the rest of the Rocky movies, it's he exists as comedic relief. But I'm tentative to say comedic relief because yeah, I don't I, often too. find Polly that funny. I Polly just kind of feels like parasitic as well, a character. He's totally parasitic in this movie, right? Oh my god, yeah. yeah. I mean, but but it's like there's no growth, and I don't understand why they have a character so pivotal in the franchise that has no growth. In fact, I think the best. Uh, okay, this is slight spoiler for. I don't know if this actually happens in the movie. Now that I think about it, but Creed sp- specifically mentions it, but like this is a slight spoiler, I guess, for the future of the Rocky franchise. But Polly is dead by the time Creed comes around, and I think that's the best that they do for that character. The best growth they have him is that Rocky gives a shit about him. 
Well, and maybe that's the point. Maybe he is in such contrast to the genuine heart of Rocky Balboa. Yeah. That that's he's just there as a as a what's the word? Uh, like a, uh, just a uh, anchor, I guess. N- no, it is, was, a, is a. I want to say contrast, but that's not the word I'm looking for. But it just as it, he's the, he's the complete but, yeah. reciprocal of Rocky. Yeah, he's just there to juxtapose, mm-hmm. I guess, the growth that the Rocky has done mm. in his life. Mm-hmm. Well, but but why do you need it? You know, especially four installments in, I would love to see them actually do something with Polly. I don't think they ever did. Well, that whole birthday scene where, like, Rocky's late and they've been sitting there for how long? With, <laughs> I mean, like, with it's all dark in the house. I've been sitting and in the they dark. And a robot in the back. <laughs> yes. I guess, yes. <laughs> it's just why I don't understand. I just that whole that whole, and that when he leaves for Russia, you know, now that she's a woman, he's he's going to have her wires tied when he yeah. comes back. I mean, come on. Here's the thing. I, I, my next negative here. There's nowhere for Rocky to go in a, terms of a personal journey by this point. And I and I which and is it, why they had to kill Apollo. That's too. what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and that's what I think they did so wisely. They killed Apollo, yes. right? But even still, after they kill Apollo, there's really no interesting scenes of even Rocky talking to Adrian, which you would think would have a lot more weight. Doesn't really seem to bear that much weight. Yeah. Him talking to his son when he's about to go off to Russia, do, you you don't feel the urgency, and it's and it's a big detractor because I I think that unfortunately. The series had run its course, and this is what I was sort of saying when I kind of agreed with where Ebert was at, which is where it really does feel like Rocky's conquered all of his battles. Rocky Rocky fought. He went the distance. He has his wife. He has his kid. He has his home. He has a happy life now. And they kill Apollo to drag him back into it. It's like, okay, but where is that, where is that struggle in his personal life? And it's just not there. And so the only things you're really waiting for in Rocky Four, unfortunately, are the fight scenes. Well, it, but it, what I said earlier is like the most, to your point about like his conversations with Adrian don't resonate like they did in the earlier movies. Yeah, they don't. The kid is like just there as an extraneous kid, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why the scenes with Apollo are so genuine and so joyful and so real. It's, it's a stark contrast to everything that you just described. Yeah, exactly. And once he's gone, all we've got is. There's nothing left. They're, they're now, now it's just the fight. It's just the fight. And, and it's a fight. You know, it's a it's, great it's fight. It's a great fight. Great fight because mm-hmm. it means a lot to him. And that's awesome to see that character grow in that way. I would love to see him actually have to fight something in his personal life. And unfortunately, they just don't have anything for mm-hmm. him to do. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, and honestly, it's disappointing because you would think that Adrian would be a little more concerned or his kid would be more concerned for his well-being. But both of them are just sort of like, Oh, you didn't tell me about Russia. Right. All right cool. Go Why are you doing it. this, Rock? You know, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, and then he gives her the speech and then, Go you know. That. And then she's I, like, yeah, totally. Yeah, I do. I know. I know. And, well, she's, she is spectacularly one-dimensional in this movie. Which is so unfortunate because they've done so much to build her exactly. character over the course exactly. of the Exactly. And I, I went back. I just, I was thinking, I, I, Rocky won where her whole, like, in the, the montages with the glasses and the, yeah, she's, well, she's a, working she's at the pet store. A, yeah, she's gone, come such a long way from that shy, introverted yes, person that we yes, met. Yes, yes, And it just, she is virtually, she's a ghost in this movie, just yeah. in terms of effect and uh, everything. Well, yeah. that's, the, that's the thing is, like, their relationship is kind of perfect. Like, even in this, I'm thinking about, like, the, I think the one scene, really, that they have before um, Apollo dies it just kind of seems like they have no issues in their whole life. The biggest issue is Rocky got home late because he was busy fighting. Like I don't, they, they have no problems. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing to fight. And I, I guess that's the, the real overarching fault I have with this movie is that there's nothing to fight until Apollo dies. Well, there's just, I think this movie more than any of the others, there's just stuff that just doesn't just flat out does not make sense. And I go back to, <laughs> Adrian standing at the top of the stairs, having apparently heard somewhere that Rocky is going to go fight this guy in mm-hmm. Russia on Christmas Day. Yeah. She's she's not angry. Like you say, she's not angry. No. She's, she, it, but the fact that he hadn't discussed it with her, hadn't told her, it just, I don't know, that that kind of rankled me in terms of what kind of relationship do you people have? Yeah. He doesn't tell you he's going to go to Russia. And fight for <laughs> him. Fight, I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be afraid. And then they, even weirder, they pretend like she did like do you remember when she kind of she comes to the cabin in the yeah snow? i couldn't stay away anymore she says it's like 
You told him you didn't. You, you told him you were out, basically, or yeah, not out, you, but you know what you, I mean. You were, like, like, but it was like I didn't realize that there was an issue. Yeah, and all of a sudden it's like they sort of play it like they were at odds, and now she forgave him. Yep. I was well, like, she, what? No, that's and, not what and, happened. At, at that point, and I, 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 weeks ago when I was watching this, and I messaged you, was like, and Adrian just showed up, and then all of a sudden the whole movie goes what? You know what I mean? It yeah, goes yeah, way yeah, up. Awesome, <laughs> and then like, the music gets more exciting, and the like all the music videos are happier, and the it's more it's more um, uplifting music, and it's not that like because the if you think about the, the the music scenes in in Russia while he's training before Adrian shows up, yeah, it's the, the music is so different than it is after she shows up, and you know, and, yeah. and then Rocky's training, and even his training is. Is different. I mean, just like the whole, the, well, the training sequences are exciting. They're very great. But I only noticed this time Dolph gets injected with something or Drago gets steroids, injected. Yeah. Yes. When I'm like, oh my God, he's taking steroids. And I don't know how I missed that in everything and all, everything else. And I, I've never even read that that's mentioned. That yeah, no, it's, uh, they, they, it's such, it's a make quick one thing. reference. They uh-huh. make one reference to it in one of the press conferences. Uh, I, I think before Apollo even agrees to fight. But when they sort of announce, I think they make one reference there where it's like, is he being injected with, with illegal drugs? Miss that. And, and it's literally blinking you miss it because then they sort of, they evade the comment and then they, they move on. And then later in the movie, they show the injection. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess that's how he's as strong as he is. It's not, they don't do anything with it. So I mean, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. And then it's just, it's just gone. Yeah. I, get, I guess it, in that sort of case, it's, it's kind of fine with me because- they don't, you know, they don't make a show of it. Like you said, you didn't even notice. So it's like, they don't make a show of it. So I guess I'm not really upset that they didn't do anything with it, but it's, no, it, but it's kind of weird. And it just, it just builds the, the, as you were speaking earlier about creating the villain. I mean, this, this guy's a machine. He's yeah. being, you know, built and it's just that, it's just part of that. It plays well, into so that. let's, let's talk briefly about the villain then. Cause I just want to, cause I want to get this out of the way. The, the last negative I have written here is that Rocky fights the Soviet Union at the end of the day. They create a character that's literally, like, the, whether they went went into it with this intention or not, uh, they definitely built this intention by the time the film was done, which is that he does he does not fight a person. He fights a, basically a sign with Russia on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, like, this is not, uh-huh. it's not, I don't, the speech at the end drives me insane because I think it ruins all of the personal emotion and it makes it about a larger picture mm-hmm. outside of the movie, very meta textual and very not related to the struggle that the character has had to go. Let's through. talk about that for a minute though, because for those of you playing along at home, when the fight starts, the crowd is hundred percent anti Rocky. Yeah. And then by the end, by the end, they're chanting, they're chanting his name, yeah. <laughs> and Gorbachev is standing up and applauding him. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're like, okay. <laughs> so that's how that happens. Um, yes, it's just like what all the things that bother me about Drago having no characterization only bother me once the movie really shows its hand with that last speech. Because because if he's just gonna be that mysterious figure, um, throughout the whole film. I'm actually fine with it because everybody's terrified of him and that's like sort of deserved. But if he's going to be a mysterious figure just to be representative of all of the Soviet Union, all of Russia in this time or whatever, just so that Rocky can have this message of peace in a boxing film. (laughs) If I can change and you can change, then all of a sudden we could all change. Then all of a sudden you have made a, a character that is not a character. Uh, and and that that I think is is uh, exploitable or or, I, 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 or it feels exploitative of the audience I guess. You know it's interesting. I I didn't take that away from it, but it, it, in the fight when Rocky finally connects and he bleeds, I was like the he bleeds. I mean he's bleeding. You know I mean it's just like he, yeah. this, he's not he's not a machine. And then it's yeah. just it's it, that whole that whole very last sequence making him human. The machine is mm-hmm. a, is now. Yeah. He's not a machine. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. But yeah, but then it's, but then it's lost. Yeah. Or like any impact. And everybody hates has. him after that because he's not a machine. Yeah. You are weak. You are whoever was that, that the trainer comes and starts. Everyone screaming. hates him after that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Watch Creed 2. Speed we'll round. S- wait, we'll wait, smack actually, you. Before, sorry. <laughs> before we get into speed round, I just want to say that um, I think a lot of people would, would include in the negatives that there's like a lot of very cheesy moments in Rocky. 
I, I cheesy the cheesiness doesn't bother me in this film. I don't know if it bothers you. There, I there's I don't I, I don't cheese never bothers me. I don't I don't think there's anything like absurdly cheesy except for that last monologue. And I think that the other things, the montages and stuff that waste your time, those are the things that you should that are negatives. But I don't. If it's a montage that's showing Rocky go the distance. I think it's fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need it. You need it. And at the end of the day, it's like yeah, it's predictable. Did did you hate it? Like, did you hate it? I can't see any. I I can't see anybody hating those things. I I, I like I said, I never hate cheese. I love cheese. <laughs> I mean, it is that is virtually my middle name. And if you, I mean, if you do hate it, then you just didn't care about the character. And if you didn't then care you about have the no character, heart and no soul, and you are damn you are, right, you are dead. You tell him. You are dead inside. You fucking tell him. <laughs> speed <laughs> round. Going into speed round. Kelly Mayfield, give me your top three moments or quotes from the Rocky franchise. No franchise, not franchise. Rocky movie. Rocky, Rocky four. four. I don't um, need to say Rocky franchise. Top quotes. You go first, please, Johnny. Can I you go uh, first. I, honestly, <laughs> the only comment that I that I wanted to make. Um, that I thought was worth mentioning in this was, does Polly fuck the robot? I just don't know. Oh, <laughs> they kind of play it like he does. They, well, and it it gets weird. He well, what is he? 60, 70 years old and never had a girlfriend or a God knows a wife, and now he's got this robot. Wife. I'm just saying, it's it's, it's, it's so it's like weird. she's really an inflatable doll. Is that, that, was the, that was the only that thing. That was the only thing that I was like <laughs> of my notes that's worth bringing up. Do we think Polly yeah. fucks the robot? I think maybe. Do you have any moments of quotes? <laughs> <laughs> Not that can top that one. Not <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. Uh, no, I just, I think the, 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 and I, I'm sorry, I keep calling him Dolph, the Drago quotes. Right. Um, um, if he dies, he dies. Yeah. I mean, just, it, which, which again goes to his heartlessness, his machine, you know, his, oh, his yeah, ice yeah. cold exterior. But I, no, I just, I think that, um, I keep going back to the the Apollo Rocky relationship, the way he calls him Stallion. I mean, there's just there's so much to love about that. Yeah, I think one of my favorite moments in the whole movie is um, the bell rings in Apollo's first round. Apollo goes back and he's, I mean, clearly beaten, and it's so evident that Rocky's throwing the towel. Yeah, and he literally looks at him and he's like, "Please don't throw in." Please, well, it, please it, don't do it. And, it, what a, and it's the reason Apollo dies, but it, again, back to his arrogance. Apollo dies died. in Rocky's arms, and yeah. then Rocky and Drago lock eyes. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Like they just, oh, yeah, they yeah. both, they, and, and of course, obviously, you know where that's going, but <laughs> it's just, it, the, those kinds of things. I, it, it's a Rocky movie. Yeah. I man. mean, I just, it, I just love everything <laughs> about that character. Yeah. I'll have to go back and rock, watch Rocky Five, though, because from all reports, Tommy Gunn. Tommy Gunn, right? Tommy, Tommy Gunn. Gunn, Tommy Morrison. Who yeah, cares? yeah, yeah. Who cares? He was. <laughs> I do Tommy remember Gunn. that now. Yes, it was. It was awful. awful. Well, so uh, leading into that, then I guess I'm going to throw you a curveball here, Kelly. Uh, Something I haven't done for other guests, but we're talking about a franchise that you and I both love. Mm-hmm. Rank the Rocky films. Can you rank? The somebody Rocky just films? did this on Twitter the other day, and there was a huge argument about stuff. Okay, Rocky one. Easy. Um, you you can throw Creed in there too if you ha- if you don't have to. I'm gonna to say you. Rocky one, Rocky two, Creed. Okay. Rocky three. I mean, I I almost. I mean, am, am I? Is it too simplistic to do it in order? I mean, because I, I like the I like the that the, the whole arc. Yeah. Yes, I like the progression of this. Yeah. Um, and I don't. Rocky five is. Probably the last one, right? Because that you reminded me about Tommy Tommy Gunn, who I just yeah, so don't like. Um, and I don't remember much about Rocky Balboa either. I'll have to go back and rewatch that. You should. And then, I should too. I haven't seen it in quite a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm and I'm older than you, so I haven't seen it in a longer while. <laughs> um, but I think that my top three: Rocky one, Rocky two, and Creed. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. How okay. about that? All right. What about you? Fair enough. Oh, me? Yeah. Um. So, Rocky and Creed, sort of interchangeable. Here's the thing. I think Rocky's a better movie than Creed. I think I like Creed better than Rocky, which is weird. Creed, the first Creed? Yes. Yeah. I think, and you know, I talk about it on the podcast a lot. Favorites are better than, or different than what, what you think is the best, right? Mm-hmm. 
Might be a hot take. Did you ask favorites or best? Throwing it out there. Well, favorites. I don't give me favorites. favorites. Yeah. Rocky won. Oh, Johnny. Rocky won's awesome. Rocky won. I love Rocky won. Yeah. And if I was doing a favorites list, Rocky won is <laughs> the second. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, I, but but it's, uh, Rocky and Creed, interchangeable for me for that reason, right? Um, then I would do Balboa. But here's the thing. Again, I like you. Have not seen it very recently, but I do remember it having quite a, an impact. So you're ranking me. it that high. And then I would do Creed too. Wow. Which you haven't seen. Damn it, tomorrow. But I would do Creed tomorrow. Too. I I look it, it, go see Creed this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know I'm wrong. Tweet at me at Bad Movies Cast and let me know if I'm wrong or right. But I would put Creed two after Balboa on number four. Then I would do Rocky two, Rocky three, Rocky four, Rocky five. I think that Rocky Five ends up on everybody's last. Everyone knows. Placement. Yeah. Everyone knows. It's, it's not a great movie. Mm-hmm. But, and, and this is apropos of absolutely nothing, but yeah. I think Rocky Four, in looking at Rocky, particularly after the fight scenes, I think that's when Sylvester Stallone started having plastic surgery. Mm. Right around it's interesting. Interesting. I'm just It's just, it, it's neither here nor there. No, you, but, no, you might be right. You might be right. But just his face looks different in Rocky Four than it did in previous Rockies. Yeah. I, you know what? You, I, I think you might be. I think you might be onto something there. And it doesn't matter. He can does do not this. matter. <laughs> he can do still, what he wants. So great. <laughs> yes, still exactly. Great. Mm-hmm. Creed's great. Yep. I'm ready to give my verdict here. This is what I got. At its worst, this is a melodramatic sports film with occasional moments of excitement between the dull character moments. But at its best, this is an entertaining and patriotic entry in the series that features one of Rocky's biggest fights in canon, I am giving Rocky IV, the Christmas movie, a 7 out of 10. Yep. Kelly Mayfield, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Today. Gianni, thank you for having me, for letting me talk about it. This is great. Do you want to plug anything? I don't know if you, you, you know, you don't have any social um, media or anything like that. Spay or neuter your dog or cats. Do that. Adopt. Do that. Don't buy. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what else? Donate to the Brittany Foundation, which is a fabulous animal rescue, or Downtown Dog Rescue, which is a fabulous animal rescue in Los Angeles, where I'm from. There you go. Um, they both specialize in senior dogs, dogs with medical issues, and pits. All dogs close to my heart. Nice. I love that. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Bad Movies Podcast. If you like this, you could follow us on Twitter at Bad Movies Cast. Feel free to tweet at me and give me any bad movie suggestions you'd like to see on the show. If you like that, you could also follow up on Sound Pollination at www.soundpollination.com. Keep up with us and what we're doing. We're excited to be launching a very uh, impressive display of um, video streaming. Uh, that's coming to you very soon. Uh, we actually have the cameras. I'm looking at them right here. I'm showing them to Kelly. She's open mouth. Open mouth. A She's da- jaw drop. <laughs> yes. um, so, yeah, so we, ha- we have the equipment. Uh, we're waiting for the right time. We're still setting up a bunch of stuff, but that's coming to you very soon. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. You're the ones who make it all possible. We'll see you next time. 